Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Salty Dog Podcast. <laughs> Let's get salty! Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's up, guys? I'm Clash. He's Dookie. And we are your salty captains. You hear what Hey! Us? Hey. hey, there he is. We are having some uh, camera fun here trying to get you to look uh, like you're not a ghost. Yeah, you know, everything that I did before the show to uh, set up my camera and make it look good um, didn't happen. <laughs> Apparently, um, my, my, my camera is a time traveler and... Went back to before it looked okay, so I had to fix it while you were doing the intro. So oh, that's some pretty I, advanced tech, though. I mean, too bad it didn't yeah. work out a little better for you. But time travel, yeah. jeez. I know, right? Like, could I <laughs> use this to my advantage or or what? <laughs> anyway, we are back just a just a few days after our last show because uh, last time we had our special Saturday Frozen Throne episode. So here we are again with episode twenty. Yeah, tw wow, 20. Yeah. Th and that, that means it's been like 23, 24 weeks. Right, because we keep skipping weeks. Because we, we've skipped a few <laughs> yeah, here yeah. and there. Hey, you got to do what you got to do sometimes, right? You got to do what you got to do. Um, our next one, hopefully uh, hopefully we, we will be able to do a next one, but uh, our next one will, will be potentially both of us in the same place uh, in Florida because I'll be doing a visit, so... That yeah. should be <clears throat> exciting, <laughs> Morty. I was just about to say, I like you sound like Rick over here. Oh gosh, Duke. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, a real exciting, Morty. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be cool. We're gonna try to do a show if we can. Uh, I mean, obviously, when he's visiting Florida, he's got family, friends, a lot of people to see here. So we'll we'll get one in if we can. But stay stay updated on next week whether or not we are gonna have to postpone. But we are here this week, of course, and uh, not you know not a whole lot has changed as far as as the meta, um, as far as decks. Like the lists aren't going to be consistent. There's a card change here and there, but a lot of what we talked about on Saturday that's holding true for for today through today. You're still seeing uh, tons of druid. Uh, I'm sure everyone has experienced this at this point. Uh, you're still seeing the control warlock and sometimes the OTK, you know, Uther paladin thing going around. So a lot of stuff we already have mentioned, but, yeah. uh, some of it, it bears repeating. It's, it's a little more, I would say a little more druid heavy than, uh, we, than we previously thought. Uh, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's weird that, you know, two days after, the 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 new expansion drops we have a very similar sort of meta game it's like everyone knew everyone kind of knew what was going to be the hotness yeah it really just, did they ran with it yeah it really did seem now i i have some stuff to say about that as far as whether or not this is going to be the meta we're staring at uh you know even two weeks from now much less two months from now um but i mean druid is undoubted uh, un undeniably powerful uh, we're definitely going to be talking about that. Um, uh, we're, we're not doing the homebrew section this week because I am a scrub and all I've been doing is playing Shadow Reaper and doing. <laughs> uh, don't yeah. have that, but we do have um, a card, card submission challenge. We're going to do some druid talk, some arena talk. Uh, so let's get into the news and see what's up. All right. What's happening? Gadgets and Gazette always gets the scoop. Time is money, friend. Keep it quick, kid. I ain't got all day. All right, so we need to talk about this guy. Uh, if you're if you're listening, if you're not watching, I have I have the splash art here of the Malfurion, the Pestilent, or M Malfurion the Pest, as I like to call him. Oh, he is. <laughs> Um, Druid, man, what is going on with Druid? I don't... There's just, oh, there's so much, there's so much power. I mean, <laughs> Druid's always been kind of a wild card, because they can just shit mana out of nowhere. <laughs> That's And, true. like, and just do, just do things that they shouldn't be able to do on any given turn. And when it's a matter of getting your Death Knight out as early as they can... 
Mm-hmm. I, I forget how much mana he is. What is he like seven? Yeah, he. I believe he is seven. He's one of the is cheaper he seven. Ones. Like yeah. you know, turn five with an innervate, and that might even be off of some wild growths or uh, jade growth or whatever it's called, jade blossom. Um, yeah. You know mm-hmm. that that dude comes out early and it gets it gets scary real fast. Yeah, it does. It it definitely does. And I totally wanted to go into the show and just like get up on my soapbox and fucking rant about Druid. But I'm 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 like calming down. I've been thinking through it and I really think that this whole thing with Druid and how explosively rampant it is right now is going to calm down. I do not think that this is the end all be all deck of this of this expansion you know it's it's comfortable right now it's you know it's done well people have made it to legend uh consistently with various lists of druid jade big druid um zoo druid all these different kinds of druid going around And, and it's become like a comfort zone for people people know it's strong it's a safe craft everything that's in the deck and and you know the meta tends to to settle in places like this yeah but i definitely do not think that he is the best death knight out of the death knights i don't think that this deck is going to continue to dominate the meta in the way that it is currently no i don't think it'll dominate i think it'll probably always i mean i'm sure some incarnation of druid will always be a thing like that kind of goes without saying Mm -hmm. i mean it was it was plenty powerful last expansion with like token druid and that's still a thing Mm -hmm. um so it'll probably always be around, but I mean, we're like, it's so early right now. Anything could come out of the woodwork. I mean, new decks are always emerging as, as we know. So exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. So, and I think the, uh, I've heard that the mid range paladin that runs like the Murloc early game mm-hmm. kind of like counters Druid and it's a good deck in and of itself. So, I mean, you, like, we already are seeing counters for this. Oh, yeah. People, I mean, you know, uh, uh, inevitably when you're top dog, people are going to make decks to try to shoot that specific deck down. I mean, especially when Druid is such a huge portion of the meta. Actually, I have a graphic here of uh, from from metastats.net uh, that's just kind of a meta de- data gathering on um, how many uh, how many games are being played, like what portion of games are played by each class. And uh, it's kind of hard to see there just based on our layout, so I'll I'll read it out. Uh, Druid is 19.51% of all games played uh, in the last seven days, Um, which with nine classes, that's incredibly high. Um, It's a little surprising to me to see that right, you know, not not too far behind. I mean, Druid still has a commanding lead, but behind Druid is actually Priest at uh, 15.8% of all games. Um I'm definitely seeing the Shadow Reaper Anduin decks, and I even saw a uh, Dragon Priest deck today, which was very unexpected and seemed teched against almost specifically Shadow Reaper Priests <laughs> with uh, yeah. Ysera and all, all kinds of crazy crazy stuff that I just couldn't deal with. Um, but that, that was a little surprising to me. Do you feel like you've seen that much Priest? Like, would you put it at second? No, no I, I honestly, I, I think Warlock. I see a ton of Warlock. Um, I see yeah. a ton of mage. Right. Uh, I, yeah, I, I see a fair amount of priest, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought it was that high. So yeah, me either. Uh, so priest representing fifteen point eight percent of all games played. Then uh, warlock, uh, which is unsurprising. I would have expected to see warlock behind druid instead of priest. Like you were saying, I see a ton of the blood reaper yeah. Dan decks going around, which we we so went over that list block. last episode. Where, you know, they just, they get all their demons down and rush to uh, Blood Reaver, resurrect them all, and then sit there and gain three health every turn, kill all your stuff. Yeah, yeah you said you've been having a particularly hard time with that, that deck. Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, and I think it's just because that's the way Paladin plays out, because I've been trying to ladder, I spent like a, like several hours the other night just trying to ladder with my, my mid-range Paladin deck that I showed you guys last week. Uh, it's only got some minor changes. I I ended up taking out the Arrogant Crusaders because I just always had something else I wanted to do on turn four, and it just kind of sat in my hand. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I crafted the Uther Death Knight. Yeah, that makes sense. So, 
Yeah, and and I really like him, and I actually won a game against a rogue who had like locked me down. But I was like, well, I have so much taunt in this deck. I wonder if I can pull off the four horsemen victory. And <laughs> it it took it took some doing, but like once I like focused my efforts on like we're just gonna do this, mm -hmm. I did it. So that was awesome. But anyway, um, yeah, yeah, the the blood reaver or whatever he is, Gul'dan. Is that Blood Reaver? Yeah, Gul'dan? yeah, Blood Reaver. Yeah, yeah he, uh, he, I mean, that, that deck wipes the board every turn. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just like the control or hand warlocks of old or the Kazakus warlocks, you know, from the past meta, I mean, yeah, they just got board wipes on board wipes. I mean, they've got Hellfire, they got Defile, which they combo really nicely with the Tainted Zealot. Uh, it's kind of a sleeper hit as far as cards are concerned. That one was kind of overlooked. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think it's even more ridiculous now. Um, like, they always had Hellfire. They always had Abyssal Enforcer. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but now that, yeah, now they've got the Tainted Zealot Defile combo. Yeah. They have, what is it, Despicable Dreadlord? That thing is I mean, crazy, especially that since thing I play is, Priest. That thing can fuck off. I mean, any... Any deck that's like hinging on Divine Shield is just crying. Yeah, with all that the thing comes one out. damage that's, that they can deal, yeah. Yeah, and that's been that's been my biggest struggle. So I mean I, I think honestly that deck's probably a, a hard counter to Paladin, which is maybe why it's sort of edging Paladin out in the class distribution there. Yeah, potentially. Um I'm I one one matchup that I'm not super knowledgeable about because I don't play either of these classes is how the control warlock with blood reaver Gul'dan stacks up against like the heavier druid decks like j druid or just the big druid right because oh, you can't yeah really realistically like eat those yeah. you know jade golems with your hero power after a point yeah i would venture to say that especially j druid probably slaps down the warlock pretty hard and that's probably what's keeping that in check because i feel like it's one of the more popular deck lists right now is the yeah the death knight warlock oh yeah oh yeah i see it all the time and i just every time i queue up against one i just i just cry i because yeah. i know i know how it's gonna end yeah, what, what's great for me, and I've been having a great ladder experience thus far, and I, mean, I haven't had a whole lot of time to ladder yet. I want to want to really sit down and see how far I can get, but I have pretty favorable matchups against both the Druid and the Warlock with the Death Knights, with my with my Highlander Priest list, and uh, that feels good. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. What, what rank have you achieved thus far? Thus far, I am rank 10. So, okay nice not, yeah not super high but um when i do have a chance to, like i'll sit down on my lunch break and do two or three games or you know if i've got some time before bed uh get a, get a few games in and uh, i have a very consistent win rate with it um you know the deck almost like when it loses it, it's it beat itself because it didn't give me the cards that i needed at the right time right because right. right, right, right. yeah the deck it, it, it kind of works against itself in that way in that there's only a few cards that are the linchpin of your win condition the rest of it is is fluff that's mainly in there just to keep you alive in case you match against aggro which is right of, of course uh, an achilles heel unless you draw into all those tech cards that you have against aggro but right. um if you don't, if you just kind of draw wrong, you draw too heavy against aggro, or you don't get those win conditions early enough against, um, you know, more value-oriented decks, then the deck just does nothing. You know, it feels like yeah. a long game of de of delaying the inevitable, which, yeah. that's sad, but it happens, with especially with Highlander decks. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, sequ I feel like sequencing is always... A, a huge issue with priest decks and especially if it's highlander yeah um but you've got stuff in there like primordial glyph to kind of like and uh you know tortolan shell razor right to kinda i like, wish i could have know. primordial glyph in there and discover a mage spell but what did uh, I, I mean shadow visions shadow visions i meant shadow visions <laughs> It's the, it's the same card in my mind. Yeah, um, I understand that. I, I, I yeah. actually think Primordial Glyph's a little better, but Shadow Visions is incredible for Priests, I won't lie. Oh, yeah, Primordial Glyph is hands down better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, for discounting, sure. the, the discount on the spells is, is what does it, but, I, I mean, being able to consistently get two Dragon Fire Potions in a Highlander deck is, I mean, it's primo for, you know, oh, doing yeah. what you need to do to live. 
Oh yeah, I've been on the receiving end, and it's not <laughs> time. All right, so mo- moving down on the list here of a percentage of games played after Warlock, we have Paladin at ten point nine six percent. So I mean, just right yeah, boy, Warlock. yeah, Paladin. Paladin's been in a good position. Uh, I mean, since Mean Streets of Gadgetan, at least so for for a while now. Um, I feel like it. I feel like it fell off during uh, Ungoro, though. Really? Because, I mean, Angoro was... I mean, there was at least a portion of time where it was, like, the Paladin Murloc meta. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, no, there was that... Yeah. yeah, no, there was that deck, there was... There there was a there was a period of time where Paladin wasn't that great, and I'm trying to remember... I think it was I feel right like it, before Mean Streets. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Yeah, no, um... And even during Mean Streets, actually, you know, the, the hand buff thing didn't pan out. I actually yeah, think it was Angoro that, that brought them back, so... Yeah, it was... Yeah. I think it was Mean Streets that I'm thinking of, yeah. that Paladin was just like, oh, God, this is torture. Mm. Um, but, yeah, no, I've been having a great time. There's some there's some really cool stuff, uh, like, you know, Corpse Taker, which isn't a Paladin card, but might as well be a Paladin card. I don't think I've seen that played, I mean, outside of Arena in any class but Paladin. Yeah, so... Yeah. Cor- you know, Corpse Taker's amazing. You remember when uh, I was talking to you about it? And I was like, oh, there's a really great Paladin card in the reveal. And you're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, Corpse Taker. You're like, it's not yeah, a Paladin yeah, yeah. card. I'm like, it's not. Yeah, I remember when you, yeah. you texted me that, and I was I was like, oh, shit, let me look. And I was like, I was looking at the, the card reveals, and I saw that, like, the one Paladin card revealed was Bolvar. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, that seems pretty cool. Um, yeah. And then I was like, oh, but this Corpse Taker thing looks dope. And you're like, that's what I was talking about. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that's not, <laughs> that's neutral. It's so funny. Like, some cards just come across that way. Like, the other one that always comes to mind is Nether Spite Historian. And how that oh. just, that's a priest card. Have you ever seen, I, actually, that's I think a, yeah. it saw some limited play in, in, in Dragon Warrior when that was a thing, but. Yeah, no, that yeah, that's a priest card for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so behind Paladin, uh, we have Mage at ten point four one percent, and a lot of that is Frostlich Jaina decks, which yeah. um, those those can be crazy. But as far as from what I've seen, the win rate isn't isn't superb on that deck. Yeah, they those those can wreck my Paladin deck real nicely, but mm-hmm. I guess if it's not stacking up in the meta, that's just uh, you know that's a blessing. Yeah. So. Um so behind Mage, and this this was a shocker to me as well, is is Shaman, how low Shaman's on the list at nine point three five percent of games played. And um I guess I can say that I've seen a decrease in the amount of shamans, but I feel like at first I saw so many evolved shamans and I thought that was gonna stick around, but it seems like it's kind of falling off. There's gotta be a a formula to make that you know incredible because i see mm-hmm. so much potential in in the evolve like with i mean the death knight is five mana and that's so cheap yeah. and shaman can get things out so quickly and flood the board so quickly and i've and i've done it and it's been awesome so it's surprising that it's that low but i you know maybe when maybe when the dust settles it will it will rise a bit because i see mm-hmm. so much potential in that yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's definitely beaten me. Um, the way that it kind of beats these decks that have board wipe capabilities, though, is is like by having those bloodlusts. So I, I really feel like bloodlust is necessary because it kind of shifts like against a deck that you know is going to throw down dragon fire potions or hellfires or whatever. Try to clear your board before you get a chance to evolve a big board. Is you, you get your small minions to stick that one turn, and then you just crush face with Bloodlust. And that's yeah. how I've lost in the past, so I'm not sure if maybe the decks are like kind of took out Bloodlust and kind of weakened their position against some of these more, um, you know, control-oriented decks. But uh, Yeah, it's definitely board wipe susceptible, mm-hmm. and with the pre- prevalence of Warlock, I can see that being, and Priest, I can see that being a definite hindrance. Yes, yeah. That, that seemed to be the biggest weakness of shamans that I've played is that I can very, very easily and successfully grind them out of resources within the first, honestly, like six, seven turns of the game. Then having a five mana thrall doesn't matter anymore because you've got nothing on board. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's no mm-hmm. point in doing it if you don't have a stacked board. So mm-hmm. timing is going to matter more than, you know, you know, doing it on curve. Yeah. 
I, 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 I honestly do wonder if there is a shaman list buried somewhere in there because I messed with shaman quite a bit this past week. It was actually one of the, it was the class that I wanted to bring for, you know, like a new deck this week. I wanted to uh, bring a, like a control shaman, which is always something I've kind of enjoyed playing. And I tried so many deck constructions using Nazoth, not using Nazoth. Um, I even tried a deck that was using Avalanche. Um, then I went back to Volcano, and I just tried so many different constructions, and it just never worked. Yeah. Which is strange, because it has worked for me in previous metas. And I wonder if Shaman's just, like, not in a great position right now. I feel like I, I played against a guy who dropped, like, an Earth Elemental on me, and then, like, did a... Was it Ancestral Spirit, the thing that makes it resummon itself? Yeah, that's always been yeah. a deck. Yeah. Like, yeah, right? And and you see that and you think, like, you know, GG, like, how am I, how am I going to get through, like, 16 health and, mm -hmm. you know, still maintain some kind of card advantage here? But uh, I was using Paladin and I think I Black Knighted one. Yeah. And I might have equality the other. I, I don't know. It's just I, I had so many answers and I think that we are we're living in a an era of lots of answers right now definitely yeah there's so many tech choices that you can use that i mean have even been around for a while and just haven't seen play like black knight is a perfect example um i've been seeing uh spell breakers going yeah. around because silence is so uh, desirable right now i've i even yeah. got i got my lich king bgh'd big game oh, hunter shit. i know like i was like wow okay yeah that's uh yeah. i haven't thought about bgh in ages but i mean yeah. I, I don't know that might be that might be totally relevant in this in this day and age yeah i mean you start to forget about tech choices like that big yeah. game hunter uh you know black knight and stuff because they go I'm so still, long yeah i'm still teching black knight and i'm i'm not regretting it. every every time i go through my deck list and i'm like what could i change what could i change i i go to black knight and i'm like nope you always kill something right yeah i so. mean you know with the consistency with which lich king's being played it's it's a safe bet right now but i do feel yeah. like more and more decks are starting to take lich king out which may or may not be your response to all the tech choices against lich king that are being used so you know it's this dance that's always going yeah. on of like what cards are going to oh, be yeah. used but i can say that lich king is not quite as strong as I thought that he was going to be initially. I still love the card, especially since it has taunt and, you know, using a vulnerable to just, like, aggressive boards deck like I am. I appreciate being able to throw down a huge taunt. But, man, I don't know what it is. I don't even I don't know if the, the Blizz devs need to, like, take a look at the offering rate of those eight cards that he can give you, but I get... And this, this isn't just to be dramatic, saying this number. I get, like, 90% Army of the Deads off of that guy. <laughs> and, like, Which I know... should be good like, for decks besides yours. I mean, not not necessarily. I mean, Jade Druid doesn't like it. All their minions are battle cries. Uh, you know, they're throwing out their Jade Idols. Um, you know, I don't know if there are really any decks that want to take that gamble. Remove six cards, and you don't know if you're going to remove your spells or what. Oh, you know your battle cry minions um yeah I, I mean i could see it going a couple ways in my own paladin deck yeah but yeah i could see it being shitty for sure yeah, i mean there goes your spike ridge steed you know like something right. you know anything like that but i don't know i don't know what it is i mean you know it's probably just rng that kind of stuff's gonna happen but very consistently the only card i get off of lich king is army of the dead and i cannot play that card in in shadow reap you cannot play that card if you're playing shadow reaper into it in highlander you just can't do it you could get rid of your death knight you could pull out kazakus without his battle cry like there you just can't use it uh, remember when uh i was talking to you while doing an arena and i had isera out <laughs> and i, ha okay, I true. had I okay true i had isera out for seven turns and I got seven dreams. It's unbelievable. I, I seven. I can't believe that. Like if I wasn't on the phone dream. with you and you you going like we were having a normal conversation about something and just in between talking he goes it's another dream and he just like <laughs> <laughs> seven yeah. turns in a row of V Sarah giving me dream. Yeah. It's just uh, like what are the odds? 
Yeah, somebody, somebody crunched those numbers. No, it's crazy. Like, I always have said this, and, you know, it's probably all just perception, and I'm not seeing it every time the, the RNG pans out perfectly normally, but, you know, things like getting back the same card that you mulliganed if you have two copies of it, you know, it's like you mulligan on, uh, you know, sap, and then your second sap takes that sap's place. Like, too many times have I seen that happen for it to be yeah. like for it to like sit well with me and, and lich king lich king cards have been the same for me i just keep getting army of the dead i'm like come on all, all i pray for in that deck every time is the death coil because it's another mind blast which is right. exactly what i want is just to kill you and it's always yeah. freaking army of the dead man every time anyway uh behind shaman at 8.79 percent of total games played we have warrior which this one's one of the most surprising to me because I really thought there was going to be a strong control warrior in this match. Yeah, I thought so too. Which maybe there's still going to be, and you know, control warrior decks usually are very complicated decks. I will say that. And maybe there just hasn't been one that's been you know worked out yet. Or maybe it's yeah. just because Jay Druid doesn't allow it. Yeah, I mean. Right now, the what we're seeing is so skewed in favor of Druid and, to an extent, Priest, mm -hmm. that I think I think counters are going to be worked out, you know, right b before this is all through. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's probably going to even out in some way because of that. But, right, like yeah, a general progression of events would would normally be for. Uh, an insanely well just uh, well crafted just efficient aggro deck beats back druid and priest and then to attack against aggro that's when your more classic control types are going to start coming back in a play like warrior which can deal with aggro really efficiently so yeah. we might but see also, a swing like that but also pirate warrior is still very good so that's what that surprises me that warrior's that low when I do see Warrior, it's it's Pirate Warrior 100% of the time. I haven't yeah. seen anyone try anything else. The old Taunt Warrior seems mostly dead at this point. Um, I haven't seen anything even resembling control. It's always throw down, uh, you know, get your rusty hook and start going face from turn one. Yeah. So. I mean, it also could be the fact that people are just trying to, like, try new decks. Yeah. And, you know, people don't want to play Pirate Warrior. Yeah. That's so. true. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, I don't think any of this, as I said, is set in stone. I mean, I, I definitely think that we'll see in the next few weeks, all these classes come together a little bit more and new decks emerge. Um, Hunter coming on, coming in behind warrior at 8.35%. Hunter has been feeling sad for a while now. Um, the, the death Knight, the death stalker Rex are not panning out, which is so sad. Yeah, that's an awesomely design card and i've had it come down and be pretty scary but then i just kind of like edge them out mm -hmm. um which is i guess that's how it goes um control or not control but mid-range hunter seems good but i guess it just doesn't have the i don't know it's doesn't have the stuff to back it up yeah that really seems to be what it is um it, it, it ends up getting, like, if you push it more towards the mid-range or whatever, especially if you're going to try to use a card that's so slow but so much value, like Deathstalker Rexar, the deck gets really heavy. And one thing that I've at least felt is that Hunter just doesn't have, pr like, the protections that it needs. It doesn't have, like, those nice taunt minions to, to let you establish. It's obviously got no heal. I mean, you can rely a little bit on secrets to try for board control, but then that gets you know it, your opponent decides when all of that resolves and yeah. um I, i'm not convinced that there isn't some sort of a secret based hunter maybe it's not running deathstalker rexar at all but definitely putricide i still think that there's a lot of potential there um i mean we saw how how powerful it was back before the call of the wild nerf um, oh yeah when call of the wild went from eight to nine mana secret hunter was amazing back then and i feel like an archetype somewhat like that could maybe find its way in but maybe not too yeah no when we were testing out decks and you were using uh cloaked huntress and putricide mm -hmm. like that that combo like 
you know, curving into turn three and or curving to turn four from a cloaked huntress, mm -hmm. and then you know putting out putricide, dropping secrets, like that's that's devastating. Yeah, I think there might be something there. Um, maybe maybe you know the list just hasn't been refined enough yet. Uh, maybe not enough people are trying it, but um, also maybe it's just not broken enough. You know, I mean, every once in a while there's you know like just remember hand and buff from me treats of gadgets in it's just oh, yeah. like it seemed so good on paper you were like oh yeah you're gonna you know we're gonna use all these little minions and make them into like medium-sized threats and then they're not gonna be able to deal with them all and overwhelm it's just never panned out spell flat yeah. yeah so i don't know but i feel bad for hunter hunter is actually one of my favorite classes it's, it's weird to say that like my favorite classes are priest and hunter because they couldn't be more like the opposite of each other. <laughs> yeah, I, I've always appreciated the way that Hunter used to be able to kill your opponent, which was not like some glorious OTK combo that was really heavy on mana. It's just like all this little chip damage. Like you used to not even know you were dying to the to the Hunter. It's like oh yeah, like you got stabbed with a blade so fine you didn't even know you were bleeding out. Like yeah. and by the time you're at like ten health, you're like, what happened? How did this? Yeah, happen? yeah, like, no, yeah. Th th it happens so much. You like. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm in a good position. And then you look down at your health, and you're at, like, nine. And you're like, when did I get to nine? Yeah, I remember feeling that way all the time playing against Hunters. I'm like, this Hunter's been off board the entire game. I've just been I've been controlling it. It's like, but he's been killing me, though. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'd love to be able to see that kind of a Hunter come back, but it's, it's been too long. Uh, and finally... Pulling up the, the caboose here, which is incredibly surprising to me. Uh, I just, I, I throw in the towel at ever trying to rate rogue cards ever again, because I'm always wrong whether I say they're going to be good or bad. Rogue at 5.77%, like potentially the worst death knight, seeing the less, the least amount of play. And I honestly thought it was going to be the best one. Yeah. Just, I, I don't know. I guess I, my brain just doesn't work with rogue cards. But I always just thought that that value that you get from that extra card, like the first place that my brain went was Arcane Giant. And like getting four Arcane Giants a game because you're playing one and then another one and the next turn, both of them again. And Vanish yeah. and Shadow Step and all this stuff. But no, Rogue is... I tried it too. I made the deck. Uh, I tried several yeah, no, different you, versions. Yeah, no, you played it against me and you got those Arcane Giants out. And it was like, holy shit, how is this even fair? Yeah, but I think you still probably yeah. beat me that game. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, it's I don't know the yeah. I guess the 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 meta is just not permitting. Yeah. Um, rogue is definitely one of the most like complicated classes to just look at the cards and be like, oh, okay, this is gonna be a thing because everything ties together in some roundabout sort of way. Yeah, I agree, and and that's probably I mean I don't play enough rogue. I mean I don't consider myself any sort of a rogue player or specialist and yeah it's just, it's very hard to evaluate rogue but I, i'm still gonna put my faith in it a little bit i i think that the most potential to change this discrepancy like all this huge discrepancy that we're seeing with druid being you know 20 percent and rogue being you know five is is rogue i think that there is a list for rogue that's going to come into play just like you know with with quests and, and it didn't happen right away but then when quest came out it just redefined the meta and it's taken a little longer for this but i i think there's something there with rogue yeah yeah i, I could definitely see it happening rogue always manages to to sneak in there right which is pretty cool i guess yeah you know, sneaking in it's fitting yeah um so I would say I would say look out for Rogue or if you're if you're looking for something to try to experiment with like I really feel like I mean your hero getting stealth and then getting to play two copies of cards like there's something there that's not just something to you know forget about but for uh, sure it's just crazy to me that how badly it's been performing thus far but yeah um yeah. that that's basically the breakdown there of what we've been seeing in the first week here of Knights of the Frozen Throne. Um, definitely, I mean, uh, I did not see Druid coming out swinging so hard. Uh, that's, that's, I definitely didn't see that happening. Yeah, I wouldn't have necessarily predicted that. Yeah. I mean, certain cards, they're, they're just, I, 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 I tend to 
not value taunt minions with really low uh, attack stats because they're not going to affect the board. But when they can actually generate about 20 uh, health on board that you're going to have to chop through with, with the spreading plague, uh, that affects the game quite a bit. Quite a bit oh, more sure. than I gave it credit for initially. Yeah. Plus, I mean, plus ultimate infestation is just value upon value yeah ultimate infestation you can't argue with and like at first i thought i was like oh ultimate infestation is definitely a one of card because it's so heavy and it's you know it's 10 mana they're running too because it's so freaking yeah. good i mean they just true it's only give a fuck about mana true you're right that's not an issue yeah yeah i mean you know, they even still run nourish which is crazy to me and you know they don't have to worry about fatigue Honestly, I'm so glad that they did print the Geist, the the six mana four six Geist, which is seeing play because of how rampant J Druid is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but just like them being able to ramp, just their mana and their card draw with no qualms about oh how deep am I getting into my deck now? Uh, they don't have to worry about that shit. Yeah, yeah. But like playing playing Shadow Reaper and and actually. Um, puts puts jades in a really awkward position of after you take out like their first board with dragon fire potion when they're small enough for that they have to really seriously consider when they're going to start spewing bigger jades onto the board because if you switch into shadow reaper and when they all die right yeah everything dies yeah this this has been where i've found you push them out of the game is mm -hmm. if they decide to hold back and just like, well, I'm just going to play one card to summon a 6-6 six, six Jade, and then I'm, I'm not going to do anything else and try to force you to do it. So if they do that, they just only play the 6-6 six, six when they were possibly capable of playing a 6-6 six, six and a 7-7, seven, seven, maybe even an 8-8, eight, eight, depending on how many idols they've gotten there. Yeah. So you, you've already delayed it. Like they, they're be, they are being clever playing around it, but you've delayed them. And even right. that one turn can change everything because you could just switch into Shadow Reaper Anduin and kill that 6-6 six, six, and then they've got nothing to hit you with and you're starting to ramp up damage on their face. Right, and then the next turn you've got more resources to yeah. kill the next one. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's worked out really well for me, at least the list that I'm using, so that's cool, being able to fight them off. It just it forces oh, yeah. them to play in a different way than they would. Yeah, we, we need things to fight them off, so it's not 20% of, of what we're facing. Right. So, yep, I, don't worry, guys. I'm going to single-handedly take out all the Jade Druids, change the meta as on, on my way to Legend this, this Do season. Do it. We are, we're counting on you. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, I mean, that's basically your meta talk. I mean, that's what that's what we're seeing. I don't think that anything is settled. Uh, new, new lists are going to come out, almost certainly. There's not been enough time to say okay this is the knights of the frozen throne meta yeah yeah no we're still we're still super early so yeah uh but there's a lot of stuff going on with arena too moving on from oh. constructed <laughs> so um there was there was a patch uh, i think it was patch 9.0 that that changed something about how arena works that wasn't very clear which was the first uh, two picks, your first two sets of three cards that you pick are going to be synergy cards, they said. And they didn't really explain too much of what that meant or how it was going to change anything else. And also, going back to the last patch before this, we kind of found out that they've been sneaking in with like sort of this algorithm way of changing card offering rates that happens behind the scenes based off of metadata that they capture. So we know that constantly class cards are having their um their offering rates adjusted by small percentages either up or down based on who knows how many different behind the scenes factors so arena is like kind of constantly changing at this point and we don't necessarily always hear about all of the changes that are happening because i yeah. mean to hear about all of it it would probably be you know a list you know a tldr list that you're not gonna okay okay you know dragon fire potion has gone down and just it, you know shadow madness is up and it's just too much right. to keep track of right but in addition they've they've released more or more information has been found out through kind of just data gathering and number crunching that actually has revealed that the first two picks 
uh, in arena now that are these synergy cards are actually taken from their own pool of cards entirely uh, this is nowhere near the entire pool. I just picked, uh, if you're watching the VODs or you're here with us live, um, this is just like a little snapshot of part of the uh, neutral minions that are offered. And there's different n numbers of cards for different classes. Uh, there's only like one card that's offered that's warrior specific. Uh, there's like three cards for priests and there's a lot more for others. But just taking a look, at these, you can see what they mean by specific synergy cards. Um, you know, you have Rock Pool Hunter, give a friendly Murloc, plus one, plus one. You got Murloc synergy there. Uh, Menagerie Magicians got synergy with Beast Dragons and Murlocs. You've yeah. got Nether Spite it's, Historian. Yeah. It's, it looks like, just from a glance, it's, it's mostly focusing on Murlocs, Dragons, and Elementals. With, like, some random shit in there, like Gadgets and Auctioneer fucking blubber baron like what is that yeah so you how does can, it how yeah. does it synergize with anything well and and that's the sane reaction uh is basically to look at these and see how how big of a gap there is in the power level of these cards um devil sore egg for example is promoted as a synergy card which i guess you're saying that's synergy with stuff that interacts with death rattle i guess i'm not really sure though because Nothing outside of the first two picks is actually altered in favor of any sort of synergy. So, let's say, like, one of the better cards on, on this page in particular is Servant of Kalamos, if you're going to get any other elementals in your deck, right? Yeah. So, you say, okay, Servant of Kalamos comes up in your first pick, and you pick him. It, it hasn't even actually increased... The, the fact that you picked an elemental that uses elemental synergy hasn't even increased the chance of your second pick having elementals, even though that's your second synergy pick. Right. It's just this gonna is be bizarre. It is. It's just going to be another pick from this pool. And it may yeah. or may not have an elemental in it. And then once you get out of those first two picks, you're just back to regular arena drafting. Here's a crazy idea. <laughs> just make it fucking random. <laughs> like, Everybody has to play by the same rules in arena. Like this is if this is helping one person, then it's helping their opponent. Like this isn't balancing anything because everybody has access to the same shit. So just make it random. I mean, yeah. that was fine for a long time. Yeah, I actually think that uh I mean I agree with you. I, I, I do agree with you. I mean, when they started doing, when they started initially doing these changes that didn't make a lot of sense, like the first thing was like when they, when they have the offering rate of like Abyssal Enforcer and Flame Strike. It's like, oh, okay. Well, there are other board wipes in this game too, like other than just these right. two. And, and they, they, from that moment on, they've just been doing too many small tweaks rather than just like arena wide, like changes in the way that the game is played it's just like all this like i just imagine all these little gnomes in the background of arena just like turning all these like yeah. gears and stuff like constantly like trying to make the best outcome happen and it's just getting weirder and weirder and i mean it's cool that they're trying stuff but it is really weird that they keep doing this kind of stuff like yeah i, I mean get it. synergy is like fun but you could still get synergy in arena before absolutely i mean it happened it happens to me so much where i just assume people don't have synergy and then they do and then it like bites me in the ass mm -hmm. i mean i don't know arenas always just come down kind of to i mean it doesn't come down to rng it comes down to skill yes absolutely. i'd say most of the time mm -hmm. but you know skill in terms of playing your deck and drafting your deck but you know, in terms of what you get offered, I mean, that's always been, you know, a, just a chance exactly. that you're taking. And everyone takes that same chance, you know. Exactly. Exactly. And no matter what they do, it's not, they're not making like class changes here. They're not like balancing certain people against certain other people. They're balancing just ever that it's a it's already a level playing field right so i don't know why they just fucking replace everything with wisps i don't know like <laughs> what like do you want everyone to just have the same card right so it's I see totally even like just you know replace it all with wisps and flame strikes like 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I totally see what you're saying. If I had to make a guess, I would say that that what they're trying to affect is the way a player feels when they're playing Arena, and that they have deduced through community feedback and and various different things that people enjoy getting to activate card synergies. Like it's not fun when you draft Tolvir Stone Shaper and you don't ever get an elemental for your deck. So they made this minor change to try to tweak up the potential of that happening but it's not it, it's like not enough and and it's too much at the same time like what they've done because some people are going to benefit way more from it like i i have a personal story for example um i i have just not been enjoying arena since this change period but i have i still have currently a a decent paladin deck and i was going into my first game and i didn't get any synergies the synergy picks did basically nothing for me but you know i got some good cards i had a good curve and i was like i feel like i can do well with this and i i fought against a mage with my, in my first game it was so demoralizing because this mage curved out on me with elementals in a way that i've never seen a constructed mage deck curve out with elementals it was obscene. Yeah. I'm talking an elemental played every turn, like, you know, on curve, like the perfect mana cost all the way from turn two to turn six. It, it like cap or turn seven capping out on a blaze collar. And it Jesus. completely destroyed me. They had, they had shimmering tempest pyros. Um, you know, I can't remember every elemental that was played. It's probably a water elemental servant of Kalamos. Like all the way up, just straight into Blaze Collar, and I was completely yeah. destroyed by that deck. And I was yeah. like, "How is this possible?" Now only two of those picks were tweaked up for synergy, but obviously she got a elemental from both of those, and then right. just a couple more picks, and she just got this amazing elemental curve. Whereas yep. it didn't benefit me at all. It's the same thing with, uh, you know, having going back and having the the offer rate of Vicious Fledgling. Now you've only just, like, put people that managed to get that Vicious Fledgling in their deck at in a better position than somebody who just didn't get it. Yeah. It's kind of like that sort yeah. of thing. I mean, if they want to, I don't know, maybe, maybe just banning certain things would be the way to Which, go. I mean, they but... do that. And they do, yeah, no, they do. But all this, mm. all this crazy tiny tweaking is just nuts to me. Yeah, I agree, and it's not the way that I would go. Um, and I mean, this this whole conversation, this conversation that we're having right now, but in much more detail, has been being absolutely just like fought over on Reddit for the last couple of days. Ever since, um, very very popular arena um, podcaster and player Adwukta. Uh, who does the Lightforge podcast made a made a pretty inflammatory post uh, on on Reddit, call, basically just calling out the devs. Uh, literally said, um, like I think the post was called "Arena Players Deserve Better," and he, and he said that the Blizzard was experimenting on them with severely undeveloped ideas and just like totally lost it on the on the developers over this. Mm -hmm. Which um, I read through a little bit of the post and I. You know, I understand the frustration if you're somebody that uh, that plays arena mostly, but overall, it seemed it seemed like a little over the top to me. Yeah, I mean, obviously they they care about arena. I mean, mm -hmm. if they didn't care about arena, they wouldn't be doing this. They would just be like, ah, go nuts, fuckers! Like, I mean, it's wild's not even like that they care about wild they balance things around wild like they they clearly care about every aspect of this game so and and they are tweaking arena more than they tweak anything so you yeah. know clearly they're you know maybe they're i don't know if they're undeveloped or underdeveloped ideas maybe they are bad ideas <laughs> but they and they clearly are Mm -hmm. attempting to do something right here. right i mean it's it's you know it's completely illogical to think that they're sitting over there like man we're gonna fuck up arena this patch like yeah here we go like let's it's get like at we it. we hate this entire button on the home screen <laughs> fuck that button we don't want to support that button yeah so, yeah so i mean but i do i do understand the frustration with it like i did not i have not been enjoying my paladin arena run and i didn't enjoy the arena run before it 
It's just everything feels very polarized in it. And I don't feel like you can you can do like you can edge out small victories as much as you used to be able to. It's either I'm destroying them or they're destroying me. And yeah. it's that it does I mean that feels more like constructed, right? It's like where you where in constructed when the meta gets to a certain point, you can almost just concede based off of your matchup because you just know that you're just unfavored in that matchup like pretty drastically and it's getting almost to that sort of point not class by class but just deck by deck because there's so many different things going into offering rates that somebody is coming out with a much better deck than yeah than others oh yeah the last couple arenas i've done since frozen throne launched uh, have been very sad so i feel you yeah, and I mean, and, and uh, it's not. Ju- I'm not just complaining because like I happen to be losing in arena a lot lately. It's just the entire feeling of arena definitely does feel different. You can feel the changes, and it it doesn't feel as good. Like I, I felt, I was just getting to a point where I felt like really happy with arena. It, it like two patches ago before a lot of this started. And, you know, I, I was getting my first, like, 12 win runs in, and I was like, I feel like I'm getting decent at this and, like, wrapping my head around it. And now I'm just like, I, I feel like I, I did before I started even trying to get good at Arena, which is like, yeah, I don't get it. I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. I've been, I've been like, saving all my gold to do Arenas because that's going to be, like, the more efficient way to get packs mm-hmm. when you're good at Arena. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I feel like I'm back at square one. I don't know what's going on. Maybe that was their plan. Maybe they're... I don't know. I don't know either. Maybe they're just really trying to shake up the game. Yeah. But, I mean, they've said multiple times that what they are doing is experimental. Uh, They don't necessarily know exactly what they want to do to change Arena. And they're trying different things, and they're willing to try new things and undo things. So, um, uh, I mean, there's been an overwhelmingly negative response from the whole community. Not just singling out Advocta or any person. In general, the community is not happy with it, so... I kind of yeah. feel like this this current arena iteration is going to be modified or just go away. Yeah. That's I mean if they can they if they if they're going to make if they can make all these changes, they can change it back. Exactly. And they've said that they will and they've said that they're willing to they want to work with the community and and professional arena players to make it as good as as it can be. So, yeah. uh Broad actually, you know, Broad um responded to Adbook just post. I mean, he's he's totally on it as far as PR and everything, especially in in more recent months. And that's exactly what he was saying. Is he was saying that they think that arena needs to be changed and balanced, and they want to do that well, and they're willing to work with players. And you know, invited Adbook to in, in Murps, who's the other person on Lightforge podcast, to join the conversation about it. So you know, yeah. these are not bad guys. We know that they're not bad guys over there. <laughs> trying to screw up their own game right. over a team five. I mean, this is something oh, that sure. will be addressed at some point, but yeah, for sure. For right now, I'm just going to stay away from arena. I'm just like, I'm just done with it. I, I, I think about playing arena. I'm just like, huh. like, Oh, just yeah. bad feelings, bad vibes. When I think about, yeah, I'm in arena. the same boat. Yeah. So just going to stay away from it. That's my solution. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just gonna hoard my gold until until things uh, you know blow over. Yeah, and I think uh, I think that the the most eye opening thing for me though when, when I was looking into the arena changes, like what does this really mean, was when I found finally that that post about it's like you know what the first two picks are from like a cross section of all the cards in the game. And that that's definitely the weirdest thing. To yeah, me. that's so weird to me, especially seeing the list. It doesn't even like make sense to me. Right. Yeah, I know, and it, like some of them are like just vastly more powerful than others. Like, just compare Servant of Calamus to Blubber Baron, which actually it's so funny because I'm like now that I'm thinking about my Paladin deck and my list, I got a Blubber Baron in my Paladin list. Like I had to take right. it because it was like yeah. the best card. And you know, and then I play against a mage that got uh, you know, Servant of Calamus, and I mean they're they're not even on a level playing field as far as anything as far as just yeah. being good cards on their own or being yeah. good synergy cards so For sure yeah it's like how did they come up with that like how did blubber baron make the cut as a synergy card yeah i mean battle cry is a thing in the game but that yeah. doesn't necessarily mean make people pick from blubber baron i don't know yeah 
exactly. I don't know. Um, but uh, anybody who's playing Arena, in general, I feel like it's probably a sad time for you. <laughs> constructed, constructed, I'm happy with. But Arena, mm, might need some work. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But uh, that's, that about does it as far as, as new stuff to talk about with the game modes. I haven't even messed with Wild. We'll have to do a show where we focus a little bit more on what's going on with Knights of the Frozen Throne cards over in Wild. I feel like it's probably going to get pretty crazy. But um, that's it for uh, for play, gameplay mode talk. So I think it's time to move on to our card challenge for this week. Yeah. So uh, we just decided to make this week a little bit more of a fun week, uh, not pose like a difficult or anything challenge. So I said, let's make a meme card. Just a card either based on a meme or just funny or, or whatever, what have you. So uh, let's let's have some laughs and see what we got this week in our card challenge segment. Prepare yourself for the ultimate test. All right. So uh, for our first submission from Rents and we are going to go back to the, the very beginning of all memes, which is very, very uh, appropriate. Back to whoever remembers I can has cheeseburger. So uh, we got Dr. Cat Scientist, four mana, two five, battle cry, add a cheeseburger potion spell to your hand. Um, and So this is a, kind of a brand new mechanic here because we're introducing half damage and half health. <laughs> so one of the first card you can get is Essence of Cheeseburger, three mana, give all enemy minions minus one half, minus one half. And all friendly minions in your hand, plus one half, plus one half. So, you know, your minions are going to edge them out by a half. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's not bad. Yeah, you know, you, you get all the nice cheeseburgers and your your opponent's sad. <laughs> I mean, if that, health, if that health keeps you holding on, then that's all that matters. Hey, if a minion lives with a half a health, he lives. That's, that's yeah. just how it works. Uh, rotten cheeseburger deal two and a half damage to all enemies. So it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they decent. don't, if they don't die from two damage, they're not going to die from two and a half. But... It's technically better than consecration. Technically better. You're right. Yeah. I guess you even deal, you deal a half a damage, two and a half damage to your opponent's face. So, yeah. Okay, nice. And smell of cheeseburger, five mana. Give all friendly minions taunt and two and a half health. So, dealing two, dealing a half damage doesn't really mean anything, but gaining a half health. Exactly, gaining a half health is where it's at. Yeah, so that helps you hang on. You can hang on with that half health. Yep, yep. I mean, you know, you got a, you've got four and a half health. That four attack minion is not getting through. Yep. Oh, nope. that yeti is not gonna, not gonna kill it. Oh, man, that's great. It's a good one. Yeah, I like that one. All right, next, from uh, Tachyon Railgun, we have a paladin secret called It's Joke. <laughs> it's Joke! <laughs> uh, okay, so this secret interacts with other secrets. Uh, w when an enemy secret is revealed, or triggered, I guess, you negate the secret's effect and destroy the secret. And then the card that you played that triggered the secret returns to your hand and whatever effect was going to happen to it is negated. <laughs> so basically the first thing I thought of is you play a spell and it gets counterspelled and then it's joke pops and yeah, and it destroys counterspell and puts your spell back in your hand. And it was all, it was just a big joke. <laughs> it's joke. I like it. I like it because I hate secrets, right? You know, and it's it would be nice to be like, oh, so that's what your secret was. It countered my like Spike Ridge Steed. Well, guess uh, I get to still play my Spike Ridge Steed. So yeah, the ability is cool, and I just I like the little anime chick. If you, if you can't see the card, it's like this kawaii. I don't know what this is from. I'm bad at anime, um, so I, I should probably know. But it's like a cute kawaii little blonde anime chick just with the the she could literally be like from sign. 500 different anime right so. i mean it's it's like the token anime girl but i'm, I'm yeah. sure that that's like something she says in whatever show she's from it's, it's just yeah so all right that's what that was pretty funny all right next we got uh from aorico's dragon kermit who is 
this is a meme I've been seeing everywhere, so it's pretty good to see it on here. Uh, Kermit is a 2-4 meme. This priest, uh, priest creature of the tribe meme. <laughs> and and uh, Battle Cry, if there is an enemy minion, gain its attack and health, and change that minion to a 3-4. So, um, it, it could end up being a card you couldn't play if, like, they had, like, a 1-1, one, one, and you make it a 3-4, and you get a 1-1. One, one. But... Right. But it, it's decent, like, hard removal against... Not hard removal, but removal, in a, in a sense, against, you know, big stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It, it's good against that. And then uh, Death Rattle, summon Dark Kermit, <laughs> uh, which, you know, you've seen those memes. It's like, it's like don't do the thing, and Dark Kermit's like, do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Dark Kermit, I mean, he comes right onto the board, so I guess his mana cost doesn't matter, but he's an 8-mana, eight 8-9. Eight, he ignores Taunt, uh, takes double damage. He himself takes double damage, uh, and he has charge if you have under 15 health. So if you are in what they call the execute range in Warcraft, below half, yeah. you you get to charge an 8-9 minion when, yeah, you, when he's your going, Kermit dies. He's going for the butt. <laughs> he's, he's looking Absolutely. to penetrate. <laughs> no talent minions matter. Yeah. That's pretty He's great. getting in there. Oh yeah, he's going for it. He's like, he's like uh, oh, don't don't do it. He's like, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> this one's cool. It has the yeah, I'm gonna do it. This one's cool. It has a lot of a lot of neat features built into it. Yeah. Might be a tad OP summoning uh <laughs> you know, an eight nine charge that ignores taunt. But you're playing it in priest too, so supposedly you're probably healing yourself the whole time. Who knows? So maybe yeah, it'll come out true. and you won't That's have charge. True. Uh, it, but it, my favorite thing is he reminds me of Vol'jin with the whole swapping of health thing. Swapping of yeah, stats, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I miss Vol'jin so much. Yeah, I guess Kermit has the potential to come out being pretty big here. Oh, yeah, yeah, depending on what you hit. Like, yeah, yeah tech this against Jade Druid. Be really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All Get right. Get yourself a 10, 12 Kermit. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. He, he could be bigger than Dark Kermit, which would be hilarious. Yeah. All right, up next from Dougie Fresh, we have a, a meme that you're going to have to explain because I don't get this one. Stefan Carl Stefansson, which is... Okay. It's seven mana... Let me, let me just tell him what the okay, card does. Seven mana, six, eight, neutral minion meme god is his type. And he is taunt, has taunt and death rattle. At the beginning of your turn, revive this minion. So he never goes away. So go go on. Damn. Um, so uh, this this guy is the actor that well in the picture is his character in Lazy Town, which the We Are Number One song from Lazy Town has been like a huge meme. Right. Uh, so that's that's the reference there. Um, and and he's currently fighting cancer, but last I looked up, he like beat it. Which is awesome to hear, right? And I guess that like what explains heard, the effect on on the card yeah. a little bit, yeah. Because from what I'd heard before, uh, he wasn't doing great. Huh. So, um, yeah. So I guess yeah. I guess the idea is just like he, you know, he you he you can't kill him. Yeah, that's right. He's just going to keep keep on keeping on because he's a meme god. No, that's awesome to yeah. hear though that he's like you know kicking kicking the cancer. Yeah, that is great. Yeah. Good All shit. right, so yeah, see, we got we've got memes with heart on the salty dog. Memes with heart. All mm. right, <laughs> so touching. Up next, uh, from Kuyoya, and it is is so appropriate that you make it into this particular challenge, Kuyoya, the meme challenge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is a legendary spell. Uh, I think it's priest. I can't tell, but probably doesn't matter. Oh yeah, it's, it's gold. Priest, yeah, yeah, it's priest. Priest, legendary priest spell. Uh, 10 million fireflies. <laughs> so for four mana, uh, your opponent cannot believe their eyes. <laughs> so summon five zero one fireflies with stealth. I don't with know why stealth. they have stealth, but hey, they do. <laughs> it's all—it almost like rhythmically, like the way the card's written works for the song. It's like your opponent cannot believe their eyes. So summon five fireflies. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, damn, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's not, I mean, 
uh, you know who would run this is Druid. Right, well, they, they should probably have Taunt, right? Like, them having stealth and no attack doesn't really, really do anything, but, like, with Taunt, like, that could be a significant roadblock. Well, the, yeah, the, I think the Taunt would be better for everybody but Druid, but I think, I mean, you know, zero, one, zero Ones are just going to die. And yeah. if they have stealth, then Druid has a chance to mark of the Lotus them and stuff. Oh, you're talking about like a, like a crazy. Okay, I, I see. Yeah, I always yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of it filling the same role as like spreading plague and like giving you a bunch of taunts. Oh like, no, I'm thinking power of the like wild, savage mark of the Lotus. And stuff. Okay, I see what you're saying. Or a uh, shaman could evolve them. True. True. Maybe they all cost five mana, even though they're zero ones. Yeah. No, that'd be that'd be the ticket right there. <laughs> Oh, that's great. All right, and lastly here, we have from Mana X, Millhouse Meme Storm. Oh, this was, I think this was my favorite. Yeah, th This one's pretty excellent. I, I like it a lot, too. So uh, his mana cost doesn't really matter at all. He he's a hero card, by the way, but his mana cost doesn't matter because if he's in your deck, you just start the game as him. You don't gain, gain any armor, and you also don't have a hero power for most of the game, because your hero power becomes Calm Before the Storm, uh, which reads, At the end of your turn, if you have 10 mana crystals, add Meme Storm to your hand. So this is going to happen every turn once you hit 10 mana. And Meme Storm, which I love the art on this. I don't know where you got that, oh, but it's yeah. hilarious. Um, 10 mana, summon a Magma Rager. A flame wreath, faceless. A ticking abomination, and an ultrasaur. Purify them all and add three jade idols to your deck. So good. <laughs> it's like so, every card that's ever been a meme card in this game. Yeah. One. the The crazy thing about purifying them all is you're drawing four cards. Yep, you're drawing, and your ticking abomination is purified, and therefore won't nuke your board. Yeah, and your magma rager is purified, and therefore it still sucks. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I like I like that you pointed that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this one just had me cracking up. Cause, I mean, the art, it's uh, just... I don't know if they made this art or if they found it, but it's just like this spew of golden cards. Yeah, and it's all uh, it's all the cards that are referenced, I, I'm pretty sure. Is I see it? a jade oh, idol my... in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I see 10 mana minion, which would be the Ultra Soar, probably. That's, that's I mean, great. you know who's going to run this, once again, is Druid. because, yeah, because they, they can... can ramp. They yeah. can get to 10 mana and meme storm you to death. So yeah. this is what, hey, this is the problem with Druid. And and I've said this multiple times when, when we do this podcast is mm -hmm. things cost a certain amount of mana for a certain reason. Right. Because you're and supposed to get them can, at a certain point in the game. Yeah. yeah. And when you can break that or play two things together that shouldn't be played together, then OP shit happens. Yeah, well, OTK shit usually happens. OTK shit happens. At, yeah. yeah. Back in the uh, Emperor Tharrison days, there was many an OTK. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I love that. Uh, you know what? I feel like these might, they might, they might have made these images because I know that the Millhouse, I mean, the Millhouse has a photoshopped cigarette and uh, sunglasses and snapback, just like totally douching it up. It's great. Are you sure that's a cigarette, or is he blazing it? Oh, well, you know, I'm trying to be kid-friendly, okay? It's 420 so. somewhere, fam. <laughs> <laughs> that it is. That it is. <laughs> it's Jamaica somewhere. <laughs> Probably Jamaica. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, <laughs> thanks for all those submissions. It was good for a laugh, especially after all the uh, all the rage against Druid and uh, Arena talk today. <laughs> Yeah. Let's take a look at Dookie's submission here, which uh, is so big it had to take up two slides. So. Oh know shit! Ready, I got go two slides. Yeah. Nice. Um, I'm just I'm waiting for it to uh, pop up on my on my. Oh, there we go. So <laughs> cracking open, cracking a cold one with the boys is my card, and it's uh, the it's called that because I had to I could only fit certain number of characters in the title on uh hearth cards mm -hmm. but uh cracking a cold one is a quest and it's one mana obviously so we'll start in your hand so the quest is activate four death rattles they could be yours they could be your opponents and the reward is to replace your minions with boys 
<laughs> wherever they are. So your minions that are out in your hand, in your deck, all get replaced by boys. All right, let's take a look at the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at those boys. God. We got we got Dat Boy, we got Fuck Boy, and we got Dem Boys. <laughs> and Dat Boy is obviously our beloved uh, Frago. Here come Dat Boy. He reminds me of the boy. He yeah, he reminds me. Of, so uh, Dat Boy is a three mana five one charge. Depicted, uh, you know, Dat Boy, the frog on the unicycle. Fuck Boy. <laughs> Is a three mana three six taunt, and it's a picture of Jake Paul. <laughs> and Dem Boys is a three mana four five death rattle summon a boy. <laughs> so he could summon himself, he could summon Dat Boy, he could summon Fuck Boy, um, and it's a picture of Wiz Khalifa and Dem Boys. Uh, so these boys are way overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's it's pretty op. <laughs> Yeah, just dem boys back into dem boys or dem boys into a 5-1 charge. Yep. <laughs> boys for days. Oh my god. It's that's hilarious. Dat boy is like my favorite meme of all time, so I oh. always appreciate a good dat boy. Dat boy was my favorite meme of all time until cracking open a cold one became a thing. <laughs> and that became my favorite meme of all time. You do like to crack open cold ones with the boys specifically. Any chance I get. <laughs> Come, coming soon uh, to uh, to a Florida near you. Heck I will yeah. be cracking open, be cracking open so many cold ones. Maybe we'll be cracking open a cold one on this show. Who knows? I hope so. Yeah. All right. So up last is me, <laughs> with uh, kind of the inspiration for why I even did this particular challenge to begin with. So instead of fiery war X here, we have fiery war X. As in Guy <laughs> Fieri War X. Which is a neutral legendary weapon. <laughs> which is a uh, three mana, two, three weapon. If you attack your opponent's face with all three charges of this gangsta weapon, ride the bus to Flavortown. Then, if you ride the bus to Flavortown, you replace your hero power with a passive hero power, it costs zero, called Flavortown. Every time you play a card, Eat a funnel cake, restoring three health to your hero. <laughs> nice. I just, I don't know. Guy Fieri is like the most hilarious person in the world to me. And just like oh, every yeah. picture of him and and his show, uh, I just, he needed to be commemorated as a Hearthstone card. And, and Dookie, you actually found that incredible Fieri War X for me, which is the most rad thing and something yeah, yeah, you would I, totally I, own. I found that 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 axe and then you sent me that picture of guy fieri and i <laughs> i did my my meager photoshopping skills and here we are yep so yeah you you uh you go face with your fieri war axe because that's the most gangster thing you can do with a weapon and then you know you get to go to flavortown <laughs> dude i wish flavortown like was more offensive yeah, I know, but, like, I, I wanted it to be something that, like, involved eating, obviously, and, like, the ongoing joke with, with funnel cakes, which always heal you in Hearthstone, that, that was just, like, the thing that yeah thought of. But, oh, yeah. speaking of food-related cards, shout out to whoever did the uh, DK rap submission. Uh, that one was actually really funny. Yeah, it, it's always hard when we when we can't when yeah. we don't use every single submission. The the Sonic one we got last minute was also pretty great, where every card yeah. in your deck summons Knuckles as well. And Knuckles, <laughs> yep. Knuckles. But um, that does it for this week's card submission challenge, and it's your turn to do the next one and tell the rules and stuff of our little oh, game here. Good gracious me um <laughs> i sure haven't thought of this ahead of time okay well um for anybody who uh, is joining us for the first time thanks for thanks for listening thanks for being here with us live or, or listening to the recording or the vod or wherever you're listening to us if you have a sec leave us a comment tell us what you think about the show or or uh you know give us a, a good rating if you're listening to us on itunes or wherever you get your podcast that would really help us out a lot trying to grow the show and reach new members tell your you know tell your 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 friends and your your sisters and brothers and, and mothers about us uh it looks like we might have a new challenge here 
<laughs> Could you tell that I I looked up? Yeah, I I saw the uh, light bulb go off. This this is this is gonna be really narcissistic, and it's somewhat inspired by a comment that Koyoya just left in in our chat saying cards based on scrubs. And <laughs> since since we are scrubs, oh um, true, yeah we are. Make us into cards. Oh my god, uh, I don't know if I'm prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> make us into cards. So when you say make us into cards, does everybody who submits make a card for both of us, or is it a choose choose your oh, adventure? Oh, you could or? you could choose one of us. We could we could each be a minion. You could submit us both as separate cards. You could just do one. You could make a spell that summons I don't know the the show itself. Something <laughs> make make a make a card that is us or the show or one of us or whatever. You know, right. ru the rules are the rules are loose here. Yeah, we're we're doing somewhere where we're loosening up the rules a, a little bit this time. So, um, but generally speaking, uh, no cards that generate more than three cards in one card. So four cards total in one submission, and if you submit more than one thing, we just pick one. Yep. Right on. Uh, but that does it for the show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll be back at our regular. Wait, well, we may or may not be back next week. That is that is a stay tuned uh thing there because we yeah we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna have, have to play that by chance. ear but yeah. we yeah. will certainly be trying to uh keep your eyes out on our twitter at salty dog podcast uh and i am at clash k-l-a-s-h-e underscore h-s on twitter and he is at dookie shed um we make our cards for the card submission challenge on hearthcards.net um please submit them as pngs it works a lot better for us getting it mm -hmm. put together and just tweet those cards at us and oh also um we were thinking about potentially trying to bring back and incorporate more often the uh the q a segment of our show so if you have anything that you want us to answer it doesn't have to be a super serious question anything that you were wondering about us or our thoughts on the game uh you can also tweet that at us as well at any of those handles yes indeed and until next time stay salty guys stay salty